whatever that thickness is there, and then I had a belt sander and just slowly took my time and worked it. Until it worked, or? Well, and as far as, it's the best bowl roller I've ever made. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't went back and said it's not, not roaring enough. <laughs> It's I, I don't think it's off. loud enough. I, we have I'd love space to... for you to swing it around so we can hear. It? I've got a recording of it, but we can oh, take it outside. We really don't want to do it inside because who knows? It could fly off, and, and you really hurt somebody. So you're saying that the twist in the string actually turns this into like a harp string for a millisecond. The twist actually changes the pitch. No, it, what it does is it stops it from rotating. Oh, okay. Because th there's all this back tension of the twisting, right? So it can only go so far. It only goes so far, and then it says, that's it. I'm, and then once it lets loose, it kicks up again until right. it twists the other way. Okay. Mm. Are you still setting up, Chris? Yes, I'm ready. You, you're, you're on. on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm Ed. It's good to see all you folks again. I'm, I'm happy to be back in Asheville. Love this place. <laughs> I don't really love it. Ashley was waving at you. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> um, and so I, I work with Lipold doing the continuum, and as he says, you know, it's a labor of love, and uh, it's been years, and you, you just, the way we're doing it, it we're very, very poor businessmen in, the, in that sense, but we're not in it to um, uh, make money and make a business out of it. We're just here because we enjoy you know, making the best thing that we can. We both have this passion for it. So I also have a day job. Um, now, fortunately, my day job um, allows me to work in music and sound design. So I have a studio, and I do all sorts of um, audio productions. You know, everything as mundane as voice recording to uh, some interesting clients that do all sorts of uh, interesting installation work. So. One of the clients I work for is in Montreal. Um, they're called Graphics Emotion. And they really specialize in doing these immersive environments, uh, video uh, presentations. I recently did one for Christmas. That was, uh, um, it was this entire Christmas show on the outside of a building. I do the soundtracks for them. Um, another interesting one they did was for a corporate dinner. And what we did for that one was have this big long table in the room, and as people came to the dinner, um, there was projections right onto the, and so everything happened right on their table, <laughs> including the preparation of their food, ah. exactly. And then at the appropriate time, a whole series of waiters came out and um, presented the food as well. So it was pretty interesting. And this, uh, a, a huge one that I did was for a projection that was um, at the Colosseum in Rome. So uh, that was a heck of a lot of fun to do. Um, and uh, I also did one recently for this cave project. So I, I, I did all the sound design for that particular project, and it's made for a series of people to come in, and um, they're all wearing headphones, and then the sound um, uh, is just in the headphones, and it's being projected, and so you can see some of their setup where they've had to use their software to correct for, you know, and to map things exactly onto this cave wall. And I don't think this is what you were referring to in terms of that cave. It might be a reconstruction of it in any case. But I was really hoping um, for this one that I could use headphones with position sensing, which would have been super cool, really, really immersive. But it, budget and time just did not allow that kind of thing. It's because it had to accommodate 20 people, so it means you have to set up 20 discrete systems to be able to play for them. But they had a system that's one of these packs that um, that plays. So that's graphic emotion. I really like working with them. And so in doing the research for what kind of music I would, you know, what kind of things you would do, you know we have flutes and they, they must have sang. 
you know, and use music that way. And they also used bull roars. And so this was the uh, bull roar that I made um, that you guys have passed around now. And uh, it was really, uh, it was a nice project. It was a nice break from sitting in front of the computer. So, you know, rather than going and buying something, I said, oh, I'm just going to uh, work with wood. And it was, uh, it was great to be able to do that. So here's... instrument and it really comes from all sorts of uh, places around the world. There's other names for it. I didn't know rhombus and turn done. And so uh, to show you where the bowl roar comes from around our beautiful globe, I picked the Flat Earth Society to, because they have the best maps. Um, so uh, yeah, it dates back to the Paleolithic period, 18,000 found in the Ukraine. But in actual fact, it's really found everywhere. So beautiful Navajo one, all sorts of different ones from Africa. British Isles have them made out of wood, stone. Um, but the, the basic concept is always the same. They were used for all sorts of uh, ritualistic, and I don't know if it was used for hunting, but uh, it, ma it was one of these things that was uh, just seemed to travel everywhere. The Maoris had them. Uh, they had them in the Amazon Basin, the Navajo, um, British Isles, in France, um, in Greece. So in uh, looking at that map, I decided to um, <laughs> do some flat earth research because you rounders are uh, <laughs> really having a problem with things. So I did a, uh, I did a triangulation and looked at uh, Sydney and Johannesburg and Nashville and, and you know, realized that, okay, well, if I look at, I can go to travelmath.com flying time and get these times for 19 hours, 27 minutes, 16 hours, 25 minutes, 14 hours and 18 minutes flying time for that long part of it. So if you look at this with the Pythagorean theorem, <laughs> if we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, uh, we're going to see this math just doesn't add up. So we're going to get a... Um, an equation where you have a squared plus b squared, roughly 685, equals 204, so that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> so the only conclusion I can get from this was, he's full of shit. He <laughs> 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 doesn't know anything. <laughs> um, here's another nice thing, another conclusion I made, looking at, okay, I want to find direct flights for Qantas, flying from Sydney to Johannesburg or Sydney to Dubai. And the two flights, if you go to Dubai, it takes you 14 hours, 10 minutes. That's on a Boeing 777. Uh, if you go to Sydney, Johannesburg, 14 hours, 5 minutes. So it looks longer. Um, that's on a Boeing 747. So I took the ratio of the lengths and the ratio of the max air speeds of the two planes uh, and came to the conclusion that NASA controls the Boeing 777 to make them fly slow. Um, so rounders will take this trip, which is super boring, to go from Sydney to Johannesburg. I'd much prefer the trip to the So anyway, that's that. So here's um, an analysis of, uh, of um, uh, this, the bull roar. So you can see that sound, you hear the, see that fundamental pitch with a few harmonics. Um, and then this cyclical spectrum that goes through as the... How long is the horizontal axis? Uh, that's, what is it? Like, uh, yeah, I'm trying to read this. What is this? I can't Oh, it's circa 10 seconds. Let's say it's over 8 seconds. Um, and this was, you know, I did this because I tried to figure out well, if I want to, my whole idea of talking about this is I built this sound in the in the mini or in the, in the knee major, and so I wanted to um, uh, take a look at it and see what kind of information. Now, 
that was an interesting way to, and I use Isotope all the time, it's fantastic software. Their noise, uh, um, uh, <coughs> you know, their, their hard, all like RX-7 packages is just amazing. Just, uh, it's phenomenal work that these guys do. Um, so that was useful, but also it was, oops, yeah, there's the sound. But it was also useful to just to put it into Melodyne, see what it did with it. And it. So it tries to figure out pitch centers and then deviation from those pitch centers. And you know, in a lot of ways, both of those analysis were useful for me to understand this thing. Anyway. So to break down the sound, um, the three things that I was primarily hearing was this very, you know, the pitch tone that's rising up uh, with a certain amount of harmonics to it. Uh, I'm hearing the wind aspect of it as it comes closer to the front. And then also there's this quick fluttering of the, the wooden piece. So I was hearing that component. So doing this sound design in the Ega Matrix, um, I decided I would do this, be most dramatic to do it from the perspective of the bull roar player. So you're right there and the sound is going to go extremely far in, uh, in the stereo sort of way. That's that. Now I'll go over to the actual, I got 10 minutes of here. Subtractive synthesis type components. I have employed a um, oscillator that runs into a high pass filter, and then a couple of um, fan pass filters. So I'll just, well, I'll play you the whole thing. is you can just space click on uh, our space when it's clicked on you space and it mutes it so now I'm just isolating some components what we're going to hear is the um, now just this oscillator part of it and I have the oscillator going through a um, high pass filter so you can see oscillator one going over here goes into the high pass and it comes out over here and I have that set at um, fairly gentle High pass 140 hertz, just because I found the sound was too too bassy. Um, and also, I'm using the high pass to get this formula here. What I'm doing here is that if you go up and pitch on this oscillator, at a certain point, it just starts to get kind of ridiculous. It's so high pitched, it doesn't make any sense. And so I just shaped it out so that it you don't get any amplitude. So on a, um, uh, on a continuum or a, 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 if you use the octave switching on a mini, when you get up into that higher range, you can just eliminate the oscillator and just get the wind effects. Um, so here's that. Let's see, where is it? Okay, so there's just the oscillator now. So there I'm just changing the spectrum. Um, it's going from, uh, like the spectrum of this oscillator goes from a value of zero to one. So as you push down your finger, it's gonna go from 0.12 to 0.25. The sound will get a little bit brighter as it goes higher. And then another thing that I did with this sound is, because I'm, I'm trying to be very imitative, I basically, dumb down the reaction of the system. There's no way you're going to be spinning the bull roar instantly fast and, and be able to stop it instantly. So I've used a lot of persistence controls and interpolation to just slow down all this data. And the spinning is, is created by using two formulas. C 
So we have this formula B, which is using a shape generator. And again, it's interpolating, so the whole thing is really, really laggy. And formula E over here. Now, if you look at the relationship between these two and look at this value, that's the phase setting for the shape generator. So just by pointing at 0.5, I've just taken them and put them 180 degrees out of phase. So that gives you that back and forth. And the speed of that is being controlled by two shape generators over here. One of them is acting as a master, and the other is following along. And it's because I wanted a volume shift to happen twice as fast, I can't remember, it was twice as, twice as slow as the um, uh, panning shift. Hmm. So, so this formula here is using shape generator two to tell it when to start. So shape generator two starts with the finger, and they both go at the same speed based on C. So the speed will change depending on how your finger goes down. Um, but it also, um, on this one, it happens twice as fast because it's being multiplied by two in this column. So what's the F formula again? The F, uh, to the right of where you are. Shape generator two as a trigger. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so that ends up being the output level. So now if you look at, so E and B are both controlled by this, um, uh, they're, they're controlled by this, this relationship of those offset shape generators, but they're also multiplied by D, which gives you your basic finger control. So now the whole amplitude is multiplied by this Z value. So when you're not playing it, you don't get any sound and your finger pressing harder, um, uh, you will get rid of more amplitude. So that's the component that does, oh, yeah, it does the pitch. Now this one here, this is just that wind aspect of it. And that's simply bandpass noise. So right up here, this is the noise input into the bandpass filter. And this is the bandwidth of that filter. and here is the um, frequency of it. So it's basically the frequency is changing a bit, but, but it's mainly that amplitude shifting that we're getting that shapes the sound the most, and that is over here. So this is also out of phase by 90 degrees now, if you look at shape generator two down here, because I wanted it to be loudest in between, you know, it's like from 0 to 90 to 180 going back to 270. So that noise is sort of coming up in the center. So that's the noise component. So uh, is, is it that along the whole uh, range that noise is present at kind of the same, but, but the tone disappears as you climb up? Up the That's right. Range. So if I go back to this original, like a crossfade, or, or um, go right down here, low. You see, I got rid of the oscillator. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's up here. Anything higher than that is kind of like, well, anyway, you can make something that's imaginary, too. Uh -huh. my, my whole thing was, to, oh, let's get this as close as I can, and then it's a musically useful thing. Um, and then you can decide to make it, you know, as real or as fake yeah. as you can. You didn't want a slide whistle coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only control I put into it is being able to change that top speed. So it's like we are. That's where I started with it, and man, it was, it took me a while to sort of figure this thing out, but what was really the kicker was this part of it, which is now this um, band.
bypass filter, uh, the number five. And so it has noise that's being fed into it with a bandwidth of uh, 0.2. Uh, and then um, uh, the, the, uh, the cutoff frequency of that will change from like 190 hertz to 860 hertz. And then it dramatically goes up as you go up higher. So that ends up being, as the oscillator drops out, this will kick into a higher frequency to create this other effect. And again, you can see like, if you look at the persistence and interpolation values, they're quite high. So I want this whole thing to be really laggy. Um, so it, there's no really sudden changes. Or it, as fast as you, hard as you can play would be super fast playing of what the bull roar could do. Mm. And this is interesting. This is, so this is the noise input into the bandpass filter. And it's basically just this shape generator number three over here that's triggered when the window, when the finger comes down. And this thing is going to be a pulse. So yeah, you should explain for people that are not familiar with it. So the shape generators uh, give basically a phase of the shape. Uh, and then, um, I'm sorry, uh, explain what the shape generators are versus the shape. Well, most people would call them LFOs. But, but, but since we actually changed the name earlier on the shape generators because people expect an LFO to go into audio frequency range. And so these are really meant to be, con you can use them that way, they're gonna be glitchy and that's great. You know, that's, but they're really meant to be control rate modifiers. And so they're, 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 you, the nice thing about in the Ega matrix, you have five of them, but you have access to all the different shapes for each, one of, for each one of them. Plus, you can have um, uh, shape based on um, uh, uh, formulas as well. So a shape generator three can be used as a triangle wave in one and as a pulse in the yeah. other. So I've used it as the a shape is in the formula. Yeah. I used it as a pulse here. Uh, and I was thinking, oh, I would do some kind of, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to do a ramp down to the sound. I've got a persistence value of nine over here. This ends up being very, very big. So if I take this right down right here. So now it's really clicking. And since this is affecting that trailing edge, as it goes up, it becomes less sharp. So you can just dial in a very particular shape, you know, time. Get the desired effect that you want. So combining all those three together, you get that. Okay, that's it. All right. <laughs> I have for you. Um, yeah, in the when I showed the movie of the of the bull roar that I made. Was that sound a real bull, bull, bull roar, or was it the one to continue making? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't with the real one. Yeah. Was, was that why you told us not to try it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually, I, 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 what I did was, and this is part of my job, is because I've worked in animation a lot, is making a fantasy thing sound real. So all I did was record ambience outside and play the mini. Uh, oh. And so, and so, just from that background noise, mm -hmm. and, you know, puts it in an environment, and then you have the fake sound, and you're not really familiar with it, so it sounds completely believable. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.